Alright, so for this video we're going to look at determining where uh, the graph is concave up and concave down. And we'll look for inflection points. Alright, so to test for concavity, f is a function whose second derivative exists on an open interval i, and if f double prime of x is greater than zero, for all x in that interval i, then the graph of f is concave upward in that interval. And if f double prime of x is less than zero, or negative, for all x in the interval i, then the graph of f is concave downward in the interval i. So basically what we need to do is uh, find the second derivative and set it equal to zero. Okay. And, and then solve for x. So let's take a look at an example. Now I've got a couple of several examples I'm going to do, and I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do one problem per video because these may take a little while to do. All right. So we want to find the intervals where the graph of the function is concave upward or concave downward. And also what we're going to do is, I know it's not in the directions here, but we're going to determine the inflection points. And I'll explain the inflection points when we get to that part. Alright, so first thing we need to do is find the second derivative. So I've got f prime of x is equal to negative 15 x to the fourth plus 15 x squared and then the second derivative is going to be negative 60 x cubed plus 30 x. Alright, so, <coughs> so we found the second derivative. Now what we need to do is set this second derivative equal to zero and solve for x. Alright, so I've got negative 60 x cubed plus 30 x equal 0 and let's see we'll go ahead and we'll factor out a negative 30 x and that leaves us with 2 x squared minus 1 equals 0 alright so now we have negative 30x equals 0 or or 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. So here we get x equals 0 or and then solving this one we need to isolate the x squared term so x squared equals 1 half so we get x equals plus or minus square root of one half and you know we can go ahead and rationalize the denominator simplify this radical that would give us x equals plus or minus square root of two over two all right so here's our zeros zero okay the second derivative of zero when x equals zero and x equals plus or minus square root of two over two so what we need to do is take these three and put them on the number line. I'm going to come up here and do that. So we've got negative square root of 2 over 2. I've got 0 and I've got square root of 2 over 2. Alright, so what this does is it breaks this number line up into <clears throat> into four regions in this case. So what we need to do is we need to choose an x value from each region. It doesn't matter what x value you choose so as long we get one from each region. So the square root of 2 over 2 is about 0.7. Okay, so this would be negative 0 0.7 if we plugged it into our calculator. So here I'm going to choose x equal negative 1. Here I'll choose x equal 
negative 0.5. Here I'll choose x equal to positive 0.5 and here x equal 1. All right. Now we have to take each one of these values here and plug them into the second derivative. Okay. All right. So let's start out with the negative 1. So I have f double prime of negative 1. All right. So when I plug negative 1 into the second derivative, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter, you can you can plug it into this one, uh, or you can plug it into the one that's factored. It really doesn't matter. Okay. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just we'll just plug it into here. And so when I plug it into here, I get 30. Okay. And and you can I'm not going to show the work on that. You you should know how to do all how to plug that in if you need to use a calculator then you can use a calculator but I get positive 30 as an answer and we don't really care about the exact number we just want to know if it's positive or negative so I know that this is positive okay and remember what it says over here if f double prime is greater than zero which means if f double prime is positive then the graph is concave upward in that interval. Okay, so that tells us that on this interval here, the graph is concave upward. Okay, now we do the negative 0.5. So we have f double prime of negative 0.5, and we plug that in. We get we get negative 7.5, so it's negative, so that's less than zero. So that means in this interval, f, do, f double prime is negative. So that means since it's negative, it's concave downward. Okay. Now let's plug in the 0.5, and that gives us f double prime f double prime of 0.5 we get set of positive 7.5 so that's greater than 0 it's positive so that means in this interval it's concave upward now let's do x equal 1 well that's just going to be negative 60 plus 30 so f double prime of 1 so plug the 1 in, that's going to be negative 60. Plug the 1 in, that's going to be positive 30. So that's negative. So that's less than 0. Okay. And so that tells us on this interval, it's concave downward. So our solution, we have concave uh, downward from negative square root of 2 over 2 to 0 and square root of 2 over 2 this interval to infinity and then it's concave upward okay it's concave upward on this interval negative infinity to negative square root of 2 over 2 and 0 to square root of 2 over 2. All right, so so there's our concavity. Okay, now 
like I said, let's go ahead and find the inflection points. Now, to find the inflection points, an inflection point is where, where the graph changes concavity. So you can see it changes concavity at negative square root of 2 over 2, at 0, and square root of 2 over 2. So we're going to have these three inflection points. So let me come over here and erase, erase this so we can, so we'll have a little more room. All right, so the inflection points I'm going to have, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this also. All right, so we have an inflection point at negative square root of 2 over 2. And then we need the y value. <clears throat> well, how do we get the y value? Well, we take, we take our x value and we have to plug it back into the original equation, the f of x, to get our y value. So we have f of negative square root of 2 over 2, which is negative 3 times negative square root of 2 over 2 to the fifth plus 5 times negative square root of 2 over 2 cubed. And this, we can, we can punch this into our calculator, or you can do it out by hand. Uh, but let's just do it in our calculator this time. And that is going to give us negative 1.23. And so we get negative we get negative 1.23 okay so there's one inflection point and then the next inflection point it changes concavity here so that's at an x value of 0 because it changes from concave down to concave up so at 0 and then this one's easy to see f of 0, when we plug 0 in for x, we're just going to get 0. So we have an inflection point at 0, 0. And then we have an inflection point here at square root of 2 over 2. And so f of square root of 2 over 2 is negative 3 times square root of 2 over 2 plus 5 times, and that's to the fifth, plus 5 times square root of 2 over 2 cubed. And that is going to give us positive 1.23. So our other inflection point is square root of 2 over 2. That's our x value. And then we took the x value, plugged it in for x, and we got 1.23. So there's your inflection points. And there's your intervals where it's concave up, concave down. All right, so hopefully this video helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, thanks.